Where's the Woodrow? The usual. So Woody's no longer with the people. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's coming here more, though. He's like, I'm going to come work here more. I'm like, oh, good. So he's stopped at, he's actually stopped by the last couple times. So we can create and disseminate whatever it is we want to? No, because this is streamed yeah. and recorded. And my mic is on. <laughs> is yours? So we need to make sure mics are on. I did talk to Shauna Wentler, and she's going to try to do some of the reporting. Uh, so I told her that we stream these, and if there's any a glitch in the system, we'll work with her to okay. summarize what's going on. Oh, we, as far as you know, we're functioning right now? Everything's going? Okay. I assume it's going, unless Bill sends me a text that it's not working. So. Okay. Okay. What's the Wi-Fi password? The guest yeah. um, is all lowercase guest, G-U-E-S-T, 390. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? So we're going to call the working session to order. Okay. And um, citizens forum? Nothing? Okay. On to board committees. Uh, nothing for policy, school forest, finance. <clears throat> You're being somewhat modest. I mean, at least throw out an update on the loafing shed because I think oh. it's almost done. That's what I was just going to ask. Yes. This tangy just confirmed that it is working. Okay. <laughs> she just texted me. The loafing shed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other, otherwise known as the Adirondack shelter. <laughs> um, it's, it's done. So, yeah, it's, uh, you'll see it from Highway 11 when you drive by. and. Yep. Sounds like people are seeing it and taking notice. So I did notice it. <laughs> I've got questions and tell my people, like, what is that? So you explain it to them. Some of them didn't even know we had a school forest out here. It's like, you know, you know, it brings attention to it. You just tell them, it's there for the public. Go check it out. You know, your kids are using it. Go see what it is. Go find trails and stuff. So it, that thing looks great. Place for the kids to load. Yep. What's that? Place for the kids to load. Yeah. A new yeah. place for them to load. That's no. why we only put three sides on it so you can really see it. And um, I guess that's maybe, well, and we do have the, the money for the cross country skis, and so that's a work in progress. Yeah. So, I gotta say that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have a They're all classroom fine. set of skis. Or like elementary. We'll, we'll thank somebody officially more in the future, but I know there were several people involved in the building of that, so just want to we'll make note of that at a public meeting later on once we get all the names in there. I know you've been a part of that, so. Yeah, that yeah, was a good thank project. Yeah. I guess on to finance then. Unless there's another committee. I think Sir. she usually does it under That's the right. business office. Sorry. <laughs> you want me to say it again? <laughs> okay. I got it. Um, next up is superintendent's report, Mr. Nelson. Well, the first thing I have is I put in the packet. Uh, today was our first in-service day with... Uh, all staff. Um, I didn't do a head count this morning, but we had a number of custodians, cooks, bus drivers, teaching staff, coaches um, at our morning session. In your packet is kind of the agenda for the in-service days. Um, so busy day, but uh, it went, went well. And we have two more days. Tomorrow will be a little more quiet day, at least for me. So. Uh, enrollment projection, uh, and this is pretty rough numbers. We don't really know until next week on Tuesday when the kids show up. Um, but we're projecting district-wide to be up six students from the end of last school year. Um, that's at 437, and that's K through 12. 
Uh, in the elementary, we're actually looking to be down one student right now, K-5. Uh, in the high school, we're actually up nine uh, for okay. six through 12. I have a question for you, yep. Jeff, related to that. Um, is the sixth grade, now that it's considered a middle, middle school, is that eligible is that for the higher reimbursement? Okay, just nope. curious on nope. that. They're, they're still uh, one, one point K through oh, six. Yeah. as far as formula weight, yes. Okay. I was Whereas just curious once they about hit that. Seventh grade. Seventh grade, is it yeah. 1.2 if, if I think remember so. right? So that's part of the formula. They're weighted yeah. as they get older. So yeah. nope, they're still still considered a 1.0 as far as that goes. Thank you. Good question. Um, next thing I have is um, a focus LTFM assessment proposal. I have information in your board packet. Um, we met, here's an update for the Buildings and Grounds Committee. When we met with uh, was Lynn, myself, and Seth. Met with uh, What's up? With Seth, and I'm forgetting names. It was like the Brad, three, Brad, and someone. Or Brad, Brad, Brent, and, and, and I don't know. Brent, Brent, and Benji. Yeah, the three B's. The, bees, the, three, the three, bees. three B's. So, um, and the intent there was, um, as we've been talking about the, the track, uh, we, we've been talking about the bus transportation flow, uh, condition of the sidewalks, point tuck, windows, you know, as well as we've maintained it, it still uh, was built in 92. It's, it's just like everything else, it's getting older. Um, so the intent of this assessment is, um, and it's targeted, we talked about the areas that we felt was most concerning, um, to have someone come in and do an assessment and uh, give us some feedback on here's what we recommend would be a priority to address sooner than later. Here are the things that can go down the road a little ways because um, we don't have enough revenue to do everything we want right at once. So it'll help us do a little more long-term facility maintenance planning. And if there's major product or projects that we need to get going on, um, looking at different funding streams, whether it's a, a bond referendum, um, there's different revenue sources. Um, but putting, getting that information collected so we can start looking at next steps. The cost of this targeted... Um, Are you okay? Uh, ouch. <laughs> that hurts. I hate when that happens. Um, is about a little under $16,000. Um, and Sheena and I have talked about it. We'll, uh, you told me where you're going to put it in the budget. Legal fees. Legal fees. That's not the word that she used when she told me where I could stick it, but... <laughs> well, it's kind of like... Just like Yes. So we'll adjust the budget is what I'm trying to say. So she wasn't too thrilled about more. I think it was not one of those auditing days, so she wasn't too thrilled about extra dollars being expended, but we'll uh, budget for it and adjust the budget um, if the board feels that's the direction we should go. And I listed uh, in the board packet kind of the main areas that we're looking at to have assessed. Any questions on that? Do they have enough public school experience to be assisting in like a bond effort? I mean, yes. somewhere in there where they say, this is probably your best source of funding here, let's get on it. Yeah, you know, kind of yep. one, one of the B's was Brad. more of <laughs> Brad. Brad, that's what his specialty in that company it's, is. Was the ref running a referendum, uh, getting it out to the community, whether you're doing um, surveys, um, and the thing that they stressed is don't get in a hurry if you're going to go out for a vote. Share the information, get feedback from your constituents um, sooner than later. Um, don't Just don't throw out a, a vote and say, hey, we want money. And, and they would work with Ellers. And we'd work, they'd partner with Ellers. Um, there's different, um, and I think I sent out in one of my weekly reports information um, from Ellers. Um, so we have resources that we can use, um, but I think the first step is defining what our needs are and then going from there. Seth, do you have anything you want to add to that? I think it's Brady, not Brad. 
<laughs> that one just came out of okay. No, uh, Woodseth has done many, many, many projects oh. throughout Minnesota. And, um, you can go, they encourage people to go look on their website at the projects that they've done throughout Minnesota and kind of get what, um, how they do things, what they look at, and how they handle things. Okay. Um, it seems like money well spent in that. We just mentioned that we had looked earlier at a company that came to us looking at an overview of everything, you know, in terms of making more efficient what it is we're doing here. This is very specific to our needs, which I like, as opposed to just the general nature of the building. Yep. Yep. So that is an action item tonight. Um, the next thing on my agenda, I put down strategic plan review and update. Um, I didn't put this in your packet. Um, I'm not going to do a review or update right now because it's going to take me some time to go back and review what we've accomplished the last few years. It's kind of, uh, we put some time and effort into developing it and then for whatever reason it's kind of fallen to the wayside. It's always been there, but we have not been uh, using this as a driving document. Um, so we'll be giving an update and I'm going to need help from some of my administrative team on where we're at on many of these items and bring that back to the board. And this might be a good time looking at the dates on this, um, 2019 to 2024, determining do we want to go through that whole process again or take what we have here and revise the next strategic plan. What do we want to tweak? What do we want to change? So that's some discussions we'll be having in the next few months. And we paid for help with that, right? Yes, MSBA. we MSBA came in, and if you remember, they did the community and staff feedback, yep. the surveys. Um, I can't remember how many nights we spent with the large community committee. Zero. Quite a few. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's an in-depth process to develop it. Um, and we might find after we summarize where we're at with things that we have enough things here that still need to be addressed that we just revise our strategic plan and until those things are cleaned up. Uh, another information you'll be, uh, the truth and taxation hearing is set for Monday, November 20, or needs to be set tonight for Monday, November 27th at 7 p.m. And that'll be part of our regular board meeting. That's an action item. Um, school board members employed by the district. Um, policy 210 um, requires a majority vote with all board members present. Um, and it does limit the annual salary to 20,000. In your board packet, uh, you have an appointment recommendation for Ms. Carla Rabita to take over one of our bus routes, thank goodness. Uh, but with uh, Ms. Sansegard tonight not being present, uh, we're going to table that to September. Uh, Carla can still be a substitute driver until we go through that formal hiring, but it wouldn't do any good to move forward because it's by statute, we don't have all the board members here. Wouldn't make a difference to do a special meeting if it was this. I mean, the substitute thing will work okay for the moment. I would. I don't. I th I'm fine with yeah. doing the substitute. It's up to the board if you want to do a special board meeting. I can check when. Is there an Robin. advantage, I guess, to doing it? Otherwise, um, setting is. It's just another meeting. I mean, that's it's up to you folks if you wanted to do it. Go with it. No. I mean, either way, I'm going to be driving. So. All right. <laughs> I guess if you, if there's a chance that we're, somebody's going to be gone in September, then then maybe we should do a special meeting at that okay. point. That's Just point. fair enough. Happens. So, anyone so, plan on being gone in September? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Carla's appointment. <laughs> So I do have some dates. I should check that. When's the September? What's the date? The twenty. I believe it's the twenty-fifth. Okay. All right. 
-hmm. So if we have to do a special, I, we have to have her. So yeah. I think we need to do what we need to do to get her on board permanently. Um, but I think in a substitute temporary role, I don't think it's necessary for a few weeks. But anything beyond that, I think we should call a special meeting if we need to. That's all I have. Uh, we will be closing, going to close session at the end of the regular board meeting um, for negotiation strategies. And Sheena and I will be going over some things with you. So, and you have to remind me that I have to uh, record the session. So, that's all I have, unless there's questions. Moving on to high school principal, Mary Merchant. Good evening, everybody. Um, earlier this month, along with three other staff members, I attended a gr um, grant wor workshop. Um, the only thing I think we'd all agree on is we need more time now to dive yeah. into it. <laughs> Sam, Sam was one of them that attended with me, Jenny Krause and Joyce Beckel. So very, very good time well spent. Um, like I said, now we just need to dive into applying for some grants out there. Um, PBIS, they had a um, training that was of no charge in Bemidji, and Sam Longseth and Courtney Bordelon attended with me, and Joyce Beckel attended representing the elementary, and we, we spent a lot of time looking at data, and then today Sam and Courtney presented to the high school staff um, how purposeful it really is and how helpful it is when we document things. So whether, whether it's um, the positives or it's the things we want to improve on, like if um, discipline is addressed so that we can see the trends because um, you put it into synergy and then viewpoint can print, print graphs, when are the most given out, what grades. Um, when you, that's for the positive parts of it. When you look at the discipline components, it will let us see which classrooms maybe, if it's classrooms, if it's hallways, where the intensity is, the time of day. So that is going to be one of the more purposeful things. Teachers are going to make a good attempt. Last year we really Im improved and increased on putting information in Synergy. But, I, but we didn't know if teachers were putting the time as far as when they were putting it in or when it happened. And that will make a difference in how we address things. So um, lo looking forward to using that data. And then career and counseling information. Um, you know, today when I saw the staff, it was like it's so good to have so many people in the building. And I can't wait till the students are in the building because I don't like the quiet in the summer. Um, but one of the nice things about the quiet in the summer, when I had some parent and student meetings looking at um, college class options, and you're never in a hurry because you aren't, there isn't someone else at your door to get in. So it was really nice to have that uninterrupted time to meet with them. Um, I've sent out a college and career planning um, packet to teachers. Um, last week I sent out free student success workshops and I actually had a couple kids respond that, and they're all virtual, that we're going to go on and um, watch some of those. So that was very encouraging. And sophomores on October 25th go to a career fair in Grand Forks. And then on September 20th, um, Rainy River has invited our juniors and seniors to a college fair. So we'll have them attend that. And then scholarships are already coming in, so I've sent that information out to students. And um, something new this summer, I met with a and and they really want to um, establish a working relationship with the school. And so tomorrow, um, Four staff members and myself are going to go, and it was open to whoever wanted to go. It, it's understandable why it'd be more high school teachers with the interest um, to go and have a tour and really to look at what is there as far as job opportunities for our students when they graduate from high school, and then what's there for job opportunities depending on the area they graduate from college with. So really looking at wanting to um, keep our students in the area when they graduate. Um, and then 
being kept a little busy with um, schedule changes. It's been wonderful how many students actually are looking at their email in the summer and corresponding with me. So I'm hoping that um, really helps next week when we start classes that there won't be many changes. And that's it. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, business office with Sheena. Our auditors were on site the first week of August, and it's going well, much better than yes, uh, last year. Uh, working with a new firm, we've just found a few glitches just based on how the last firm did things, based on this, this firm. Um, like working with Ide Bailey in the past, they would actually log into our software, and I would give them access, and they would just pull any information that they would they would need to look at. They would pull our trial balance and upload it into their system and different things. <clears throat> this company does not do that. So I found on my end, there's just been a lot more exporting work. And every time I make journal entries, I need to send them a new, a new summary to put in their system. Um, uh, we also found that um, we didn't receive our work papers last year, which is basically like the Excel format of the whole audit. And it's, it's kind of their, just the whole format that they use to come up with everything. Um, so I was told that we need to get that information from our last auditor, so we are still working on that. I did get a reply back tonight, and they indicated they would maybe send us one sheet um, so I did forward that information to my boss. We need, we need some components from the spreadsheet from last year in order to finish um, like our state aid receivables this year and also our tax receivables. So we just figure out exactly how much more we should be getting and we take that money from 2024 and move it into 2023. So we're waiting on that part. We have submitted a few closes. Um, the final complete close isn't due until the end of November, but we just submit and then we can check our reports the next day on the state website just to see if we have any errors or if anything else needs to be fixed. Right now we're air free. Everything's been taken care of that we need to, uh, unless the auditors make some more recommendations, which they probably will. Uh, so right now we'll just keep going back and forth via email. They'll ask us to look at something and pull some information and send. So we're just <clears throat> working on that. They indicated that they would provide the final audit report at the September board meeting. It will probably be October, the way it's sounding, which is just fine. Usually an audit report isn't presented till November or December, so we're still early on in the schedule. Hopefully we'll get everything we need it, we need figured out this week. But um, my supervisor also said, if they won't send the work papers, it's not the end of the world. We can just figure, figure it out from there, but it really, it really helps. We did find a couple of discrepancies, um, just looking at our final financials from last year, they don't, there's a few things that don't match in the final audit report. So, um, Bergen KDV pointed that out. Good information, but we just might have to make some slight adjustments. So, overall, I mean, they were really good to work with. Everything's, they just email and they also have a portal, so we just upload everything that they need. So, Okay, so next I'll just go over the rest of the finals from the from FY 2023, and then um, I'll just share some more updated information and then some information on this fiscal year. So right now our state revenue is sitting at 92% received, same as last month. It's exactly where we need to be and we should be. 
The last bit of receivables will come later, but we need to book the receivable and move it back, and that's what we're waiting on at this point. Uh, federal revenues are 132% received. Uh, the reason why that's higher is because we, we were able to submit an application and just get more uh, Finance 170 COVID funds. Um, local revenues, 171% received. Our total revenues budgeted was $6,965,435. We are projected to receive about $368,242 more in state aid. So currently our deficit is $564,521. If we get about $368,242 in gen ed aid that's being held over, we should finish the year at a deficit of $167,631. This will be a differ difference of $74,763 from the budget that was presented in February. We had budget to have a deficit of $92,868. So we should have more concrete information at the next board meeting once the whole audit's done. But most of our JEs are entered for the year. Everything's been, been spent and moved um, just as required by the state. All our grants for FY 2023 have been spent. There are no remaining funds. Um, so I did go through each of them and just indicated what I drew for each quarter um, for you to see. But everything is ex expended. Uh, the USDA Supply Chain Assistance Fund, which is for Fund 2, we will be getting money this year. Uh, Jackie had heard it on a webinar. I haven't been, I haven't received anything yet. I haven't been told how much yet, but um, that would probably be the only thing that new that or additional that we'd be getting. All, all our grants are done, everything from COVID and ESSER. The Farm to School First Bite grant, we still have $2,500 remaining to spend, and we have the whole school year to spend it. We just submit our expenses by quarter, and then we are reimbursed. Our expenditures for the end of the year, our salaries and wages, finish the year at 110% expended, which is $396,946 over budget. Our benefits are 102% expended, which is $26,536 over budget. Purchase services are 95% expend expended for the year, $74,185 remaining. Our supplies were $197,445 over budget. And just like in our last meeting, we discussed, you know, what, what's included in supplies. It's pretty much everything. It can be fuel, um, a new faucet. It's, it's just a wide range of things um, needed for the building and transportation in different areas. So, um, And things were just a lot more expensive this year. Fuel is going up. We even budgeted that for higher for next year. So... Hopefully we'll see some things go down. Mom. But um, our equipment is 112% expended, $41,496 over budget. Overall, all expenditures combined were $714,867 over budget. Ow. Ow. Our fun to food service finished the year at $3,854 profitable. So that was good. Um, even factoring in this year, we this, we paid for meals. And, you know, going back to that, and usually you would expect to have a deficit or close to zero, so we finished off the year good. We still have a good fund balance in food service, but the state did change their guidelines 
So we haven't been advised to spend down our fund balance and it didn't gain much this past year, so we should be good. Um, we also had to replace a freezer, so that's a pretty good equipment expense too coming up. So um, thankfully all the food was okay. But so food services has did well this year and our fund balance is Gina, just fine. Excuse me, is that in two thousand twenty four? The yeah. freezer expense? Yeah, or twenty three. 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we just got the bill okay. two weeks ago, I yeah. want to say. I knew that you had looked at repairs or something, so I'm just curious. Thank you. Yep. Uh, our student activity balance report is attached. Our class of 2023 has been cleared to zero. The class of 2028 still has a negative balance. We're still working on trying to figure it out. Um, we, I have negotiation spreadsheets ready for each negotiation group. So that is part of our, my list for upcoming projects. Uh, I have to get our special ed UFARS information to the brick co-op to put into CEDRA. That's usually completed in September. New year pay, payroll rollover and setup. So just getting everyone's payroll ready to go for the September 15th payroll and everyone's time off set up. I believe I got everyone in time clock today, so they're good. And levy submissions will also be completed this month. So I have a few things to fill out and send in to the state. I did attach a July 31st UFARS expense revenue summary. So just looking at our very first month of fiscal year 2024, um, we have a deficit of $816,456.56. That's totally normal. All the teachers are turning in their supply requisitions. So we're ordering everything for the new school year all at once and then we're not getting any money from the state. So that's definitely expected the first first month and then pretty soon our revenue catches up and and trickles in. So not much to report on for the new year. So any questions? <coughs> yep. right. So the uh, COVID money comes in federally. We're 132% on federal revenues. Where does the local uh, go 171% over? So like when I budget for local, I'm budgeting for like, like random, random payments that will come in that you can't really code to a UFARS. They're just, just different things that you don't necessarily say, oh, this is state aid, or this is tax money, or this is from this particular grant. It's just random money that we get that comes in. And wouldn't the local revenue just be local tax money that went up because they went through and readjusted everybody's taxes higher? Well, that's coded to like, okay. to special tax code or, okay. or So revenue. this is even outside of that? Yeah, this is out of that, outside of that. It's okay. just different dollars that come in that we don't really code to a specific area. Can you give me an example? Um, you know, if we get it, I'm trying to think. Wouldn't local revenues include local tax Mama, revenue? Mommy. I, think I wouldn't does. say this would be. I mean, we're talking about a pretty small amount of money on that line item, right? Yeah, that was going to be the next question. Yeah, I'll be yeah, a dollar. You get 171%. Yeah. That doesn't give you an idea about the total dollars. I mean, that was my, about $2, but my thought was just like Boyd's was that's local tax revenue. Oh, this is interest also. <clears throat> Good point. This is also interest earned, which I budget very low for this year. And now the tax rates have been favorable. Like we've been okay. getting a really good return on interest. Okay. So it is fees and interest. It's, yes. it's on page four. So each month I receive in, yeah. um, from Min Trust and the bank, like the interest we make, and it's been a lot higher than what it was last year. It's a little bit better explanation of it, where the property taxes have its own line. Own oh, line. Own line in there, okay. Yeah. I mean, that was the concern was if your local revenues are at 171% of what you budgeted, and yet we still managed to trickle down from 90000 to $170,000 on a 
on a budget shortfall, uh, if we got back into 100 percent, you know, or expect what we expected, uh, we're even in more trouble, you know, yeah. coming on. So that's what I'm a little nervous like, about. Like for me, like when you're looking at local revenues, I'm not going to budget to get um, more in interest because I don't want to over budget something that will more than likely not get or like just random things like there's employees that will sign up for like on their credit card program they can indicate they want their earnings to go to the school so we'll get like random payments for like um you know like amazon smile yeah amazon we'll get smile things payments. like that yeah. where it's amazon smile i'm trying to think there's a few other programs where we'll get just random checks in the mail from so th they really are when it says like local miscellaneous that's kind of what it is and truthfully the reason that our deficit is bigger is because our expenditures are higher not because our oh, revenue is low yes yeah Run we definitely went debt. over on supplies yeah. and equipment this we year we spent a lot of money and wages i did i did sense. under yeah. budget the wages so you're right tim we would have been in better it was in worse shape had our revenue not been yeah. over Right, which makes me kind of nervous because now if we start hitting our budget projections and we hit them at 100% instead of 171% and we managed to miss the budget anyway, you know, we, the shortfall is 80% worse than what we thought we were going to get, uh, there, there's an exponential value that's going to make that even worse, you know what I'm getting at? Uh, so I don't know how you nickel and dime that. I assume the audit will give you an idea of where those expenses went a little bit out of line or where we didn't budget well enough for them. Yep, and one thing I really like about this, the frontline software, is it really does help me to see it too. So what I see in finance is one thing, but when they lay it out in different areas here, it's a lot easier for me to see. So. Right, so for instance, I mean, you're going to give us a, a negotiation sheet possibly here in the next hour, and I'm looking at salaries and wages, for example, are 130 percent or 110 percent expended, but $396,000 over budget. So as we go into a negotiation, we need to tighten up on possibly, you know, I understand that there's a lot of money that's being thrown out at the state. I mean, it's improved quite a bit, but it's hard to look at that number. I mean, that's, I, I don't know what our total payroll is, but what kind of percentage is $400,000 on our total payroll? Is that 10% or is that uh, something wrong? I mean, I mean, we have a $4 million budget on, on uh, payroll? Well, we're 10% over, so it would be, this would be 10% of our budget. Okay, so it is about $4 million mm -hmm. on a yep. payroll situation. Yep. So anyway, I mean, the numbers get, get out of whack kind of quick. Anyway, just throwing those out so we got something to think about when we do the negotiation strategy. Any other questions? I do have a question maybe about my email earlier today about the, the contract for um, solar. Yes. But it's, it's not on the agenda. It's, I thought we added. we added it. Added it. It's in okay. So it'd be okay. So it's not on the agenda copy. This one, right? But it's in the.
Next up, we have activities director, media, Sam Lyon. Hello. Um, so fall sports are off and running. We have our first volleyball game, formal regular season volleyball game tonight at playing the Freeze in Carlstead. Um, and excitingly, they're at home, I should finish that, they're at home tomorrow um, against Fertile Beltrami and then in Nevis on Thursday. Football is at North Woods in Cook, Minnesota on Thursday and Cross Country hosts our um, home meet tomorrow at Sibyl Bay, which is um, a shout out to Jenny Skoog. She's got a, a mat, it, she's I think going through the group campground and then going to end at the beach um, down by that kind of public swimming beach. So I'm excited about that so that, you know, fun for the state park to get some um, traffic and fun for the kids to see a different tr course. Um, so she's put a lot of work into that. So I'm excited about that. Um, and so what you have there in front of you is our coaching lineup for this um, fall. New names include Hal Reeser, who you've confirmed, and then Tina Lorette stepped in to do the junior high volleyball team. Um, many thanks to her for stepping in. She um, admits to not knowing a ton about volleyball, but is very happy to learn and to be a supervisor for them. So. Um, we have the scoreboard update. Seth, I don't know if this was on your docket also, but a um, little bit delayed in the installation. We are ready on our end for them. It's just been a slow getting out the door and shipping process. I don't think Dactronics expected how long it would actually take to get up here. So in terms of the shipping, they sent it and they sat in Fargo and the Bemidji. And so a um, little bit of a slow process, but we're hoping here and then I think it's scheduled for this Friday, next this coming Friday, and we'll see how that goes because it requires a lot of hands to make that happen. Thanks to Seth and Dale for working on that. Um, Community Ed pool is going strong. I think we're going to hit another lull with lifeguards, given that our summer crew is back at college. So we had this sur summer surplus of lifeguards. Our schedule might shift a little bit this fall. Lisa and I are meeting about that tomorrow. Um, holiday extravaganza, we're starting the process for that. That will be November 18th. I think that's the right date. It's that Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, it's always a fun day you know, generalized chaos, but a lot of people in the building. We're hoping to potentially do a quilt show, which I think will add a fun element to it. Um, youth activities, we're doing two sets of youth uh, football this fall, a fourth and fifth grade group after school, and then a second, or kindergarten through third grade group on Saturdays. Jill has got her volleyball crew, her, her second and third, and then fourth and fifth grade volleyball happening. Um, so that's exciting. We did just also finish up our uh, musical theater camp. So that was a replacement of Prairie Fire Theater. We, Prairie Fire was reevaluating their process, so they did not, were not able to fulfill their contract. Um, we went with another organization called Missoula Children's Theater. They're actually out of Montana, and they do a very similar traveling director duo who then bring all of the, the setup and the costumes and all of this. And they put on a King Arthur's Quest, which you saw in the paper, which is a really great, we had 17 kids involved, some local, some not, ranging in age from, I think, third grade to juniors. Um, they sang, they danced, there was a dragon. It was really quite fun. So a really fun thing to be able to pick up again post-COVID, because that is the first time we've offered that post-COVID. And I was, obviously we would like more, but I was also very excited to have 17 kids show up. So that was a good deal. Um, the grants workshop, Mary touched on this. I think all four of us, it was Mary, Joyce, Beckel, Jenny Krause, and myself, um, all felt like it was really worthwhile two days. Um, sometimes you go to those things and you're a little bit like, okay, this wasn't, this wasn't worth it. But this woman was very informative. She had a lot of tips and tricks. We walked away with documents to fill in for ourselves, which I think we felt, the biggest part of that is that we felt energized about grant potential in a way that we could, we could capitalize on that. 
like she pointed out also, we're now back into the school year and going, okay, when do we, when do we have time to do this? So I'm hoping, and we've even identified a few of those grants that are upcoming. There's a CHI local community health grant coming up on September 8th. There's a Region 2 Arts Council grant up to $18,000 for community ed and arts programming that I could apply for September 15th. So there's always stuff out there, but it is a question of taking the time to do it. Um, and so when we look, I bring this up and I spend time on this, because when we look at this, these budget shortfalls, I, I think there's opportunity to find grants to potentially backfill some of that. It doesn't solve all of your problems, as in it's not a silver bullet, but can I fund Missoula Children's Theater by doing a grant, uh, finding a grant for it, that sort of thing. So we're excited about that. I think the fact that the four of us went together was a good kind of, okay, we're going to bolster each other and make this accessible for people. Um, that's what I've got. Any questions? <laughs> okay, thank you. Next up, Buildings and Grounds with Seth Butts. don't have a lot on the agenda, but what I do have has been some really big projects. Uh, one of the big projects we have going on right now is the auditorium lighting. That's been put on hold due to the shipping thing again. We're starting to find out that a lot of um, companies that are relying on shipping, we're getting back to like the beginning of COVID era, where they're starting to go out three, four, all the way up to like 10, 12 weeks now to get parts in again. So it's kind of pushing my schedule around a little bit. After the first week of school, um, Pat and Dale are going to start with the uh, redoing all the electrical wiring and the panels, get them updated to receive all the lighting fixture. We have not heard back from uh, Go for stage lighting yet on if they have all their fixtures in all the lighting that's what they're waiting on when they're coming in so that's kind of that project stands on hold until we find out a little bit more of when all the lighting is going to be coming in uh, second one is the entrance apron repair they have we had the pool entrance repair done that apron when they opened it up, found a lot of surprises on how poorly it was put together and built. And uh, they were going to do the main entrance because we have a crack in that one. Also, they're going to, because of timing, they're going to hold off until after school's out next year. It's safe to walk on. They're going to put a little patch in to fill that spot so it's not a hazard. Um, any questions on that one? Okay. Gym floors, the refinishing is done. We had the um, uh, poly coat put on the large gym, like we do every year, just to freshen it up. The utility gym was completely sanded down and redone. It was something that was long overdue, but it is all up and going, looks great. They fixed the issues that had from the little history. I don't know about it. Is it flooded at one point? and a lot of the boards warped in it so they got all that straightened out got it fixed got it cleaned up repainted just beautiful it looks like a brand new floor in that one uh, the commons monitor installation is in process right now we have one that we're ready to put up all the wiring's done the mount brackets are mounted once that one's done then we just have the two smaller ones that are going to go on the side of the um, Bears Den up there. They're going to take place of putting up papers, schedules, things going on. All the school happenings are going to go electronically now on it. Uh, the one that's on the stage that we're going to finish up first, they're also going to be able to play movies without the projectors anymore. They'll be able to just plug in a USB and run it like that. So it's a big, big plus for clarity. People can see it and kind of bringing thing up and things up into the electronic age now. Um, any questions on those project updates? We'll do the, like you said, the um, notices and stuff like that will be published on those. Who will do that? <laughs> you mean put the wording on it? Yeah. Yes. So Tracy already has some slides in place, but Tracy, Diane, and I have 
access pretty to user that. friendly to do it's yes, amazing. very user okay. friendly. Yeah, so okay. Bill's the one who installed what we're using. Um, yeah. It really just looks like a PowerPoint presentation. Perfect. So it's extremely easy to use. And then teachers, because we are not going to be using the PA, so the teachers in between class periods, as kids are coming in and they're doing attendance, can also project it on their boards from their computers. Yeah. So, it's a long term goal and hope for me is I would actually like to utilize it, say, for having a game. People are eating, are out, they stop at the Bears Den and grab concessions, that they can stay in the commons and still be able to watch the games. That's a long-term plan I would like to get to. But as for right now, once we get them up and going, they're going to be great for notifications and stuff throughout the day and any changes and stuff. Oh. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. And next one, we can move, go move on to snow removal contract for three years. I had a meeting with uh, CCN. They're the ones who did our snow plowing last year, and they would like to extend the contract to go in three to five years. We had a meeting, did a little discussion, and we agreed on like a three-year to go on that. And it's kind of a, I think that's a really good thing. You know, they were very happy with the way things went. I was too. There was a lot of learning for them and they're hoping that they'll be able to do even better, make it more efficient this year now that they know what's going on. So and I they think, don't like shoveling by hand. <laughs> no, that they do not. I'm not a big fan of that one anymore either. <laughs> so I think that comes up as an action item tonight. So any questions on that? Okay. I, I had a thought on the contract that there's no out clause for the school. There's a yes and a no to that. It's verbal. We could get it put in. We discussed that a little bit. It's a good and a bad thing. Um, our verbal agreement, we could get this put in writing, redo it. If something the school's not happy with the way things are going, they're very, very open to sit down and talk about it. And if we have to opt out, we opt out. The positive side for the school is we don't have what happened a couple of years ago where somebody says, yep, we're going to come in and do it. After the four, first snowstorm, they were out. They were done and left us hanging. So there's kind of a good and a bad about that. If there's any recommendations or wording that you guys want in there, I'm open to it. I'm not a professional contract writer. How does it prevent that from happening? It locks them in for three years also, yeah, if that contract's in there. But like in that case, if the company closes, the company closes. So yeah, it does. It does at that point. That's one of those things like any contract. How do you prevent that? Yeah. That's so a good point, work. though want to have an opt-out clause in there if so we should probably table this table it and, them and yeah absolutely i mean i don't see it as being a problem but it's always better to have it in writing than yeah. I, I think it's a good idea yeah. Yeah. okay but yeah that's yeah. fair absolutely yeah. any other questions i think the big thing is we are very happy with yes the product that we got I, last year I, with I mean, they took a lot of stress off my plate last year. They were there when we needed them. And uh, I was very, very happy with their services. They're very, very meticulous in how they do things. And they met my standards, and they were very reliable. So it gave me, uh, took away a lot of sleepless nights, so some that I could sleep. Frankly, their second year, I think they're probably going to get more efficient. They're Absolutely. Know what they're doing. So they did go through and were talking to them. They went and bought bigger equipment. They realized that it was a monster of a job. It was a learning process for them. They learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, people don't realize how much area that's out there that has to be plowed until they get in there and do that. It was quite a year of snow, too. It was. It was. Less, so. it was. Yep. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Staffing update, as of right now, we're one custodian short from a uh, full crew. We are waiting on a background check for a potential. Uh, we do have a couple alternate 
plans if we end up um, shorthanded going in. And we'll figure it out, just make sure everything is done. Woody Fiala stepped up and took Saturdays permanently. I know last year that was a very sore spot in how to staff that and the kind of taxing on everybody. And um, a couple of my staff were really burnt out having to come in early on Fridays, leave early, and then come again 7 o'clock and open the school up. Very, very tough on them. And I tell you what, the crew stepped up to that. And I got to give them kudos. These guys are fantastic. Um, and like I said, Woody, uh, I talked to, he actually approached me. We met in the hallway because I was going to ask him that question. And he's like, before I even said anything, I made that motion. He goes, I got Saturdays. So I was like, all right, one last thing to worry about. Um, any questions with that? Okay. And then the last, we finally had a five-year sprinkler system. Uh, five-year sprinkler inspection gone through. I do not have the official results back from them yet. The unofficial results, I walked around with them. They opened up, they did three branches of the six that we have here. And they opened up four circuits on each one for the sprinkler system. Immaculate condition. It was a big concern because nobody they have, nobody remembers even having a five-year done when it was done, but it was very, very comforting to know that everything is clean. We have no issues, foreseeable issues with the sprinkler system in an emergency. Well, that's all I have. Any questions on that? As soon as I get the official result, I'll make sure it gets out to everybody on that one. So. Is food services with Jack Peterson and Jill. Then transportation with John Bacles. Well, I think I got some good news. We got two new drivers. So one's sitting next to me. She worked really hard at it, and she did. She did really well. <laughs> Maybe she disagrees, but <laughs> um, she'll be taking over the Williams route. And we got Steve Kramer. He'll be, we're going to combine the Indus route with the Clemson route, and it's going to flow perfect. So that'll be nice so we can kind of, we're, we're not adding another route. So, and I'll be helping him with that because that's my old route. So, um, so we have seven routes, and right now we stand with five full time drivers, and we got two subs there and cover the other two. So we're okay. It would be nice to hopefully get a few more full-time drivers in the future, but we'll, we're sitting good as of right now. Um, that's all with the drivers. I did get to try out the new two-way radio, and it uh, Dale was did. Um, I was I had a trip to Bemidji, and Dale was calling me every about 20 miles, and it was crystal, first time ever I built. I can understand somebody on the radio. It was crystal clear. And even when I was in Bemidji, I mean, it was crystal clear. So it's really promising. So the ones we've had in the past. Is we not to throw in on the other end of that. Um, Dale and I were, actually both of us were together talking to John on it. You have the ability on your phone, you can track where that bus is at. You can see it, it pings it by GPS. So if there's ever an emergency or something happens, you know exactly where the bus is when it's there. It, that can really be really system. helpful, especially if I'm sitting back at the garage and a bus gets stuck and they're trying to explain where they're at. I can go on there and look and I can get right to it. So it, it, it's a nice tool to have. <coughs> That's all I got for now. Any questions? Thank I'm you, assuming John. like the, uh, the, I don't know if that helps your cause in the building, but when you have no Saturdays to cover, does that make it easier to possibly put an ad out and hire somebody? Or like the, the custodial staff? or? I mean, yeah, because it used to be you had that you were asking for weekend coverage out of it. And yeah, out of a normal day during the week, and we had to alternate it, which made it difficult. But yeah, I think that hopefully that helps. So we're still looking for bus drivers. We got an ad out, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. And custodians, sub custodians. Yeah, and that seems to work better on word of mouth than anything, right? I mean, yeah. find somebody who yeah. is capable. Right. And 
last we have IT with Bill Chambers. Nothing? Just the list on the agenda tonight, right? To the yeah, mm -hmm. yep. That's a yearly thing that he submits. So. Okay. Well, I think we can adjourn the working session and move right into the regular board meeting unless somebody needs a break. Nope. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're looking for a motion to approve the agenda um, and just to, actually we'd have a uh, changes so we would table the appointment of Carla Rabita bus driver and then the addition of Nathan Solar um, on our tier one welding instructor is that all the changes um, um, the <laughs> CCN Slow removal contract until next month. Oh, yep, table that. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Motion by Lynn, second by Carla. If I can. Any further discussion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we have board presenters. None? None. Any written communications? No? Okay, move on. No old business. So move on to new business. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the July 24th, 2023 board meeting minutes. I'll make the motion. Johnson? I'll second it. Second by Lyon. Any discussion? Call for a favor. Oh, favor. <laughs> Call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion passes. Looking for a motion to approve the invoices, financial statements, bank reconciliation, wire transfers, and purchase card statements. Motion by Lyon. Second. Lyon and Johnson. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next up, we're looking for an approval of personnel, resignations, retirements, and appointments. We have two appointments, Tina Lorette, junior, junior high volleyball, and Nathan Solar, tier one welding instructor. I'll motion that. I'll second. Motion by Carla, second by Ellis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we're looking for a motion to approve the resolution 2023-2024-02, accepting a donation of $359 from Wabonica Lutheran Church to the Lake of the Woods High School Backpack Program. Make the motion. I'll second. second. By, go ahead. By Robita. Second. Johnson and Robita. Any discussion? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to Wabonica. They must make a lot of pizzas. <laughs> they sell a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah they do. wonderful. Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we're looking for a motion to approve resolution 2023 slash 2024-03, accepting a donation of $100 from the Scott and Marsha Schmizik um, to the Lake of the Woods Backpack Program. I'll make that motion. Second by Lyon. Ellis and Lyon. Any discussion? Does backpack program function during the summer or something to the equivalent? Um, yes. Uh, Joyce Fadness has some families that she provides meals to. At least she has in the past. I'm not sure how many she did this last summer, but that's been done in the past. Mm -hmm. 
i have a question about that too so if someone knows of someone in need you can make the recommendation just let just let yourself or mary know or so, let someone know at the school or, yep. yeah not that i do i just was curious yep. about that asking for a friend yeah. <laughs> Once the tomatoes and cucumbers are done, maybe I'm <laughs> 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 Zucchinis. Yeah, it's stuck in the kitchen. Yeah, I two zucchinis. <laughs> Can't get rid of all the green beans. <laughs> Joyce Beckel is a good resource. She um, has a list of families that she's working with. That. Maybe Shauna, if she's listening, yeah. could do a write up on the backpack program. Yeah. <laughs> That's a test to see if she's listening. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next, we're looking for a motion to approve the disposal of obsolete IT equi equipment. I'll make it. Second by Lyon. Johnson and Lyon. Any discussion? No, with the old and with the new. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we're looking for a motion to approve the Bedette Lutheran Parish User Agreement. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Robita. Johnson and Robita. Any discussion? That's the Ruby Tuesday stuff. Mm -hmm. Ruby's Ruby. Yeah, Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's on Thursday. <laughs> Ruby Thursday. <laughs> That's a dating size. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Johnson and Romita, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we're looking for, actually, we tabled the uh, approval of CNN Services snow removal quote until next meeting. Um, so, we don't vote to table that. No. no. I do think we signed well, that contract that. with them. We could, we could do that. Do a vote to do a motion to. It's in the handrail. Okay. Should we do that? Uh, sure. I mean, it's well, it maybe redundant. It's not going to hurt. It's anything. redundant because you took it off. Yeah, you yeah. took it yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I would, if you took it off, I would leave it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's always, I mean, if we have the crib sheet here and we get in the habit, but. <laughs> board member can always make a motion to deny it or table it. I mean, yeah. we do have that power have to create a motion. Yeah. But we covered it on the agenda. When right? we adjusted the agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're good. I just think we signed that contract with them last year the day it was snowing. Do you remember that? It was yeah. Like it started snowing and said, let's get this done. So <laughs> nice that we're getting it done in a warm month right now. <laughs> get it done with. <laughs> Okay. Uh, next up, we're looking for a motion to approve um, and set the date for the truth and taxation hearing as Monday, November 27th, 2023, at 7 p.m. in the ITV room. I'll make that. Whoops, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Lyon and John, or sorry, Ellis and Johnson with the motions. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we're looking for a motion to approve the facility assessment. Pro uh, no. Approve, sorry, there's some wording here that's killing me. <laughs> to approve the facility assessment proposal. That's with Widseth. With Widseth. Okay. I'd make that motion by Lyon. Second. Lyon and Johnson. Motions. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we're looking for a motion to approve uh, the first and final reading of the policy revision for policy 2010. Conflict of interest, school board members. Make motion. Second by Lyon. Johnson with a second by Lyon. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now I'm looking for a motion to close the meeting for labor negotiation strategy pursuant to Minnesota Statute 139A.14, Subdivision 3, at 7.13 p.m. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Allison Robita with the motions. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. No, Mama.